Hello. I can't, I see Carissa and Carla on, but I don't see there's Sarah. All right. <clears throat> hey guys. Hello. Hello. All right, everyone's just popping on. Cool. Hey, Steph. Hey. Hey. Oh, I love your thing, says Dr. Stephanie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How fancy. Yes, girl. Gotta, gotta own. I love it. I love that's, it. From, that's from years of struggling through imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. Are you going to talk about that? I want to hear about imposter syndrome. No, I can tell you what it is, though. Yeah, tell me what it is. So basically, imposter syndrome is something that usually um, a lot of professionals kind of struggle with, but it's that idea that you never quite belong in, you know, you never quite belong to the success that you've achieved, and you kind of are always feeling like you're kind of, like, like it's going to be ripped, like ripped out of you, like ripped under whip, ripped away from you or you're not enough a big that's a big one is that you think you're not smart enough you think you don't know as enough you don't you think you don't know as much as your colleagues and so there's always this doubt in your mind so in a sense you feel like it's if you feel like you're an imposter within your field and it's incredibly um like like really a big problem with it, especially within like the medical field law um just because you know, you spend so many years working towards something, always striving, always comparing, always having to prove yourself through your grades and your accolades. And you just never feel like you're, you're enough, you're smart enough. So it's called, so it's, it's called imposter syndrome. Wow. I never even heard of that. That's, and I can, I mean, I can totally see that, but I love that you're owning it. I think that's amazing. So yeah. So basically me kind of owning the, the doctor and just really embodying it and not just kind of because for so long I wouldn't even say doctor like I would just call myself by my first name and everyone's like why don't you say that you're a doctor like what's 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 and it's it's in your subconscious right it's like what you tell yourself in your subconscious that's that's what matters the most so well that's a really good intro to this call I feel like so <laughs> we're gonna get into it um we are recording um I know that everyone's kind of on summit hangover so I appreciate that you're doing this for us and I'm really happy we set it up before summit because <laughs> like I feel like I would have been scrambling this week otherwise um so for those of you hopping on I want you guys all to meet Stephanie, she is a part-time coach and full-time ER doctor. Um, Stephanie, I don't know if you know this, but I saw you speak at NLC. That was my first year at NLC. And I remember seeing you on stage and being like, wow, she's killing it. So um, I was moved by you then. And I actually did a call for Steph's team a couple weeks ago. And we're kind of just doing a call exchange. So um, Whitney, who's on this call in the dark over there, um, <laughs> run our teams together. Um, so we have kind of everyone from both of our teams on this. Um, and Steph is going to talk to us about mindset tonight. Um, I call the call mindset matters. I think she called it something else, but, um, she is a five-star diamond elite coach. And like I said, um, full-time ER doctor, which she now owns Dr. Stephanie, um, and a part-time coach. So I'm going to let her take it away. Awesome. All right, guys. How, how are you guys doing? How you guys can hear me okay? Excellent. How many of you guys were at Summit? Raise your hand if you guys were at whoop, whoop. Yes, I know. It was a whirlwind. It was crazy. It went by so fast. I'm already excited for next year. So it's going to be amazing. Um, but first of all, I want to thank you guys so much for hopping on, especially those of you who were at Summit, and just for taking time away from your friends, from your family. I really value that. And I always like to kind of say that. And it shows a lot to your commitment to your business, the fact that you're on this call, you know, and just taking the time, you know, from your, from your family. So what I'm going to do is today, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about me. Um, maybe you guys have, I've, I've been on like one of the success stories at, the, at Super Saturday, but I'll tell you my story, my background. And then what I really want to get into, which is like my passion and talking about it is mindset and just really the mindset that you need 
in order to have success overall, but specifically, you know, tying it into this business within, you know, with, with our network marketing business. So, all right. So what I'm going to do is share my screen so that you guys can see my beautiful, beautiful screen. Can you guys see my, my PowerPoint? Here, let me take this off my Zoom. Can you guys see my PowerPoint? Okay, awesome. Okay, cool. So I kind of thought success lies within your mindset. And so a little bit about me. And so this, let me bring this down a little bit more. Okay, awesome. So the starting point of all achievement is desire. And so this is me when I started as a coach. So this was back in 2013. I was in the middle of the busiest time of my life. I was a resident at Harvard. And so for those of you who don't know anything about residency, it's like hell on earth. And it's just lots of hours working 60, 70, 80 hours a week, switching from day shifts to night shifts. And so I had a very erratic schedule, incredibly busy, and my wellness, my balance was off. And as a result, I'm someone that I have always battled with my weight since I was a child. How many of you have battled with your weight since you were a child, overweight child? This is me in the top right, so you can see in my Catholic school uniform, just a bit, I grew up chubby. I grew up always on this kind of yo-yo dieting. I started dieting when I was like 11, 12 years old. So again, to my mothers out there, like, and I watched dieting from my mom. I used to go with my mom to Nutrisystem. I used to go with my mom to Weight Watchers. And so for all you who have little ones, they're watching you, okay? And so they're watching you, they're watching your behaviors, and they're watching your relationship with food. And so for me, I battled my weight. I gained weight in college. I mean, in, in high school, I did Weight Watchers. I lost weight. And then in college, I gained like 30 pounds the first year of college. And so I came back home. I hit a rock bottom in my weight. And then I ended up just kind of slowly taking the weight off over the years. But then when I got to med school again, the weight started to creep back on again. And so what you're seeing here is you're seeing kind of me at one of my heaviest. It wasn't my actual heaviest, but one of my heaviest. And I was, you know, I had, I had no energy. Nothing in my closet was fitting me. My self-esteem was low. I wasn't, I did, I'm someone that I usually enjoy taking photos in my life I was not taking any photographs which I'm sure many of you can relate to you know that period when you're like I don't want to be in anyone's photos not even like so don't don't even take a picture of me um, but that was me so I had reached a point where I was like okay enough is enough and my boyfriend or my fiance now but he was my boyfriend at the time he had insanity and it was like a bootleg copy. So again, this is like, we didn't pay for it. It was like the bootleg of the bootleg. It was like copied upon copy. He had gotten a, a copy from someone and we were like, all right, let's try this. And so I, I started it and it was like hell. Like I was like, it was hell on earth again. And those of you who have done insanity, you guys may know, like it's incredibly, it's an incredibly tough program. And so I had gone on, I had done that program and I was doing it and I was like, you know what? I was watching the, you know, how at the end they would talk about Shakeology. They would talk about Coach Summit. And I was like, okay, this thing's really cool. Um, however, I can't do this whole program. I want to see if there's anything that I can do that's shorter, right? And so I ended up finding that T25 had just come out. And I remember at that same time, I was online, on social media. Instagram and I was like watching all of these people who had before and afters because I was looking for inspiration right I wanted to get in better shape and so I was looking for that inspiration on Instagram and I remember watching these girls none of them were beach body coaches but I remember watching girls who would have transformations and I said you know what that's really cool it would be really awesome if I could do that one day mind you I didn't know I had again I wasn't looking for beach body I had no idea that this beach body world existed but that's kind of what happened. And so I ended up started posting a little bit about nutrition and this girl randomly approached me. Like, I don't even know who this girl is. She randomly approached me off of like a clean food post that I wrote. And she just said, hey, you would be awesome as a coach. And I said, okay, what does that mean? And she said, well, you'll get our products for a discount and you know you'll get to you know work out and you'll be a part of a group and i said all i heard was the discount because i was three hundred thousand dollars in school loan debt and i was like i need to do something and I, I want whatever is the most the cheapest way and i signed up 
as a discount coach. Now I'm that like, I'm like that unicorn coach that comes in and you're like, this girl's not going to do anything. And I like took off. Like I, you know, I hit the floor running, not knowing anything about this business. And so what ended up happening is that the next, that evening that I signed up, something inside of me woke up, like literally. And, and, and what I want to say is that up until that point, again, I was in my residency. I had already graduated med school. I had known since I was a child that I wanted to be a doctor. It was a goal for over 12 years of my life. However, when I reached it, I kind of had this empty feeling of what's next for me. So I was in a sense seeking something for me to be passionate about. So I'm that, I'm that person, like when people, I, I didn't join this for the money. I joined this because I was A, looking for a solution to my wellness um, imbalance. And then number two, I was seeking something that I could be passionate about. And so never in a million years did I think that it would grow into a successful business. However, that's why I joined. And so when I joined from day one, guys, from day one, I started sharing my journey and imperfectly, and I say that again, imperfectly, I took action in consistently sharing my story and little by little, my business started growing. And so what I wanted to show here is that this was my, this was, this is one of my transformation photos. So I started with T25. I committed to T25. I did the program every single day and I got great results with T25 that people started asking me, what is it that you're doing? You're super busy. How can I learn more? Right. And some of the blessings that have come from this, from this opportunity and why I want you to take this opportunity seriously. And I want you to dream big is because not only was I seeking my passion, I was also seeking an opportunity to be able to work from my computer. I wanted the flexibility of travel. I wanted the flexibility of time because again, like I said, I had spent 15, you know, 12 to 15 years of my life focused on a track and giving away my time to become a physician. So I wanted my time back. And so with this opportunity, I have a picture here where I'm in, I'm in the African safari because I went on an around the world trip and I was able to take my business with me. And that was huge. I was able to travel. I was able to go sightseeing during the day. And then at night I would come back to my computer and work my business. You know, another blessing has been my fiance and I, our relationship has grown tremendously through the personal development aspect of this business. So again, more blessings that this business has brought into my life, as well as that picture in the bottom left is meant to represent continued travel where, you know, I'm going for personal development and conferences. We were just in Fiji for a Tony Robbins conference, but all of this would not have happened had I not said yes to this opportunity and had I not taken it seriously. Okay. And one thing that I understood when I came into this opportunity was that I needed to become a student again. You know, I didn't know network marketing. I was not someone who used to post a lot on social media. So I needed to take this seriously, even though I was a professional in medicine, I was not a professional in network marketing and I was not a professional in sharing my journey in wellness. And so I needed to be, I needed to be willing to be a student again. And then this picture here is just, again, showing, talking to the community that has been built because, and the, which is another blessing because of this opportunity. So to change your life, you have to change yourself. And to change yourself, you have to change your, your mindset. So what I tell all of my coaches and anyone who will talk to me is that life begins one step out of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone, if all you do is stay within your comfort zone, that is a dead zone, okay? You are not growing in there. And so you should be, as a coach that wants to build a business, you should be surrounding yourself with people that encourage you to step outside of your comfort zone and getting used to that idea of being comfortable with the uncomfortable. And so number one I wanna talk about is leaving your ego at the door when it comes to tips to having success in this business. Again, I kind of alluded to this already before, but you have to become a student again, right? At the end of the day, I didn't know anything about coaching. I didn't know anything about nutrition. I didn't know anything about personal training. I didn't know anything about you know, sharing or growing a team or leading a team. However, I was humble enough and I left my ego at the door and I said, you know what? I'm gonna listen to the coaches who have gone before me. Success leaves clues and I'm gonna go and look for them and I'm gonna go and see what they're doing and I'm going to learn. So I was willing to learn. And so you have to also be willing to be coachable. 
You know, your coach, you know, they, when they're telling you to do something, it's not because they're trying to take you away from your family or they're trying to set you up for failure. They're telling you the steps that they have taken, the tried and true steps that they have taken and their, and their mistakes that they've learned from to try to help you move forward. So being willing and being coachable is incredibly important. Being willing to fail forward, right? At the end of the day, this is a big one. A lot of coaches, they struggle with failure, but it's understanding that failure is a part of success. And the more times you're failing, that's wonderful because that's more feedback that you get of how you need to change something so that you can pivot and keep moving forward. So really looking at and evaluating, how do you look at failure? Are you someone that you're afraid of failure or are you embracing it as part of the journey and realizing that you're gonna fail many, many times? Another thing that goes along with leaving your ego at the door is being willing to be transparent and share you. How many of you struggle with sharing your story authentically, right? One thing I love about this opportunity is that it turns whatever obstacle you, obstacles you had in the past, whatever struggles you had in the past, it turns all of those things into a light to help other people who may need to hear your story. And so if anything, I want to encourage you to be honest, to be raw, to share the lessons, the good and the bad, because our country and people on social media are starving for relatability. They're starving for connection. They're starving for people to who they can look to and say, you know what? Wow, she's gone through the crap that I've gone through and look at her now. She's committing to her, to her wellness. She's building a business. She's, she's choosing not to let her circumstances be the story that she keeps telling herself. So being willing to share you because that is how you're going to find the tribe that's out there specifically for you. And so I just want to encourage you because the people who are going to be attracted to you are going to be different than the people who are going to be attracted to me. However, if they don't know you intimately through your posts, they're never going to find you. And so just really asking yourself, are you putting yourself out there consistently? Because within, with this business, it is incre incredibly pivotal that that's something that you're doing every single day and every week, sharing your story, being transparent, being raw. You need to do your reps, right? They say it's, it's before you master something. And one thing, you know, when people are looking at coaches that have made over six figures or who are in the top 10 or who are able to quit their job, right? Or who are able to bring in significant income that can, you know, lead to more time flexibility, right? Like for me, I work this business now, not only because it, it fulfills me, but because with what I make as a coach, I'm able to not have to work as much if I choose as a physician sometimes. Yes, I still work full time, but there are sometimes when I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna work a couple less shifts this month so that I can go and travel, so that I can go and go to a conference. And I have that flexibility and I don't have to worry about money um, and, and having a hit to my, to my um, what's it called? Having a hit basically to my overall income. And so understanding that there's the hard, unglamorous work behind the scenes and that consistency and that unseen steadfastness, which is again, that discipline is so incredibly important. One thing that I tell, and I'm sure, you know, it's the same thing for Jillian, but I know for me, in almost five years, my five-year anniversary is in July, and I can sit here and tell you that personally, I have never missed a day of coaching. Never. Never missed a day of showing up to my social media and posting, right? Showing up every single day, no matter what, no matter if I had, you know, very little sleep, if someone was dying, if I was moving across, you know, from the, from the north to the south of the country, no matter what, I always tried to show up to my social media because that was my storefront. And I always showed up to my accountability, my workouts, my wellness, because that was, you know, that is, that's our rule. That's our job. So make sure that you're doing the four vital behaviors every single day is incredibly, incredibly important, guys. If you're struggling just with getting the four vital behaviors every single day, I want to encourage you to just make it a goal to focus just on that. Just focus on getting those four vital behaviors under your belt consistently for at least three to four weeks. And don't even worry about the rest of the business, but focus first on those vital behaviors because that's incredibly important. Also, in terms of doing your reps, making sure that you are practicing 
practice, 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 practice. This business is built on practice. You know, it's not like Jillian and I, we kind of like signed up and we were like, yeah, we know what to say exactly. And we know how to deal with objections and we know how to talk about coaching and we know how to be on videos. We didn't just like wake up like that. You know what I mean? Like we, we practiced it even when we were, even when we were uncomfortable, even when we were shy, like if you watch my videos from when I started, I show it to my team sometimes because I'm timid. I, you can tell that my confidence is not there, but guess what? I still took action and I still pushed myself and I still tried because I understood that that's what is required. I understood that it would take me talking to lots of people to have the confidence to be able to handle any type of objection or any type of comment that comes my way to be able to control the conversation and always turn it into something positive. That takes practice and you can't be afraid about saying the wrong thing or not doing it right. You have to be willing to just simply, you know, do what's necessary and practice. And then one thing that I'm forever grateful for when it comes to when it comes to medical school is the idea and the concept of delayed gratification. That's something that I learned and I'm grateful for because of medicine. Because again, like I said, I went through 12 years working towards a goal that was never a guarantee. I was able to take that same mindset of delayed gratification into building a business. Because in a sense, especially in the beginning, there's a lot of work that you're putting in. When you're starting those conversations, when you're planting those seeds, when you're first starting your social media account and no one is watching you and you feel like no one's watching you, even though there are people watching you, but that idea that in the beginning you're putting a lot of work in and sometimes it feels like you're not getting the return, right? But again, you're not an employee, you are an entrepreneur. And the employee mindset is that, you know, you're, you're trading time for money, but with the employee mindset, it's not with the, with the entrepreneur mindset, it's all about the value that you're giving. That's why, that's why people will, will pay you. And so as you're building that value, as you're building that trust, as your, you know, that's going to take time and understanding that. So when I started, I said, you know what, I'm in this for the long term and asking yourself, are you in this for the long term? Right? Like, are you in this to be in this five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now? Cause I know I'm going to be here 15 years from now. You know, I know I'm going to be here, you know, you know, working my business and being an example of health and wellness and encouraging other women to be an example of health and wellness, but are you, are you willing to put in that, that test of time? Or are you just doing this just, you know, for whatever reasons that you have, but you're just looking for something that's quick and easy. The discipline, you know, mindset is incredibly important that you have discipline and in discipline guys, it's the ability to control one's impulses, your emotions, your desires, and your behaviors, right? It's the ability to control that, that no matter what, you know, to control that and to turn down immediate pleasure and instant gratification in favor of long-term satisfaction and success. And that's the key, guys, because let me tell you, I'll be honest right now, I have a massive headache right now, a massive caffeine withdrawal headache right now. And I was like, you know what? I was feeling tired today, but never once, you know, when I, I was like, I'm going to do this call. I had several calls throughout the day. Never once did I even think about canceling anything because at the end of the day, I have that discipline that I'm going to show up. It doesn't matter how I'm feeling. It doesn't matter what my emotions are. I'm here to serve you. And hopefully something that I say is going to benefit, benefit you. And there are going to be days, and I'm sure there are many days when we just don't feel like doing anything where we're just tired, where we're drained, but we still show up to our business, we still, we still do our follow-ups, we still find something to post on social media. It's not like every day we're super motivated, but it, because of that discipline, guys, we do the work that needs to happen. And so, you know, discipline to possess it is to be able to make the decisions, right? Take the actions and execute your game plan no matter what. And so you do it no matter what, and you do it even when you don't want to do it. And that is something that's key guys. That's something for you to really ask yourself, are you letting just obstacles get in your way? Are you letting what other people think of you get in the way? Are you letting, you know, 
stress and feeling tired and lack of sleep? Are you letting all of these things get in the way of whatever your goals are? And are, or are you saying, you know what, I'm going to be disciplined here because this is what matters. So asking yourself, because this is key. If you want to have success, if you want to be a premier coach, if you want to be an elite coach, it's going to take discipline. If you want to have over six figures and extra income a year, it's going to take discipline. It's going to take, you know, putting in those hours and making, you know, and also thinking about like, what does it really require to bring in that type of income, right? You can't expect to work two, three hours a week, four hours a week, five hours a week and bring in over six figures in income. That's just unrealistic. Now, granted, if you're someone that you just, you're happy making, you're happy wanting to try to push for just, you know, just, um, paying for your Shakeology, that's great too, because this, but I, again, I'm more so speaking to those who really, really, really want to push and have big goals and just realizing that this is going to be key. This is huge, right? Belief, belief in yourself. The reason why 66% of entrepreneurs fail is because of this, because they do not believe in themselves. And so asking yourself, how much do you believe number one in yourself and how much do you believe in this business and in our products, right? Because I will tell you, I believe 150% in what we have in our products, in Beachbody On Demand, in Shakeology, in the bars, in the booths, in the performance line. I believe 150% and I will go head to head with any other type of product line and talk very confidently about our products I will back up our price. I know the quality of what we have and I stand proudly behind what we represent. Who you? It's the same thing also about talking about this opportunity. I believe 150% in network marketing. I think it's my duty and my responsibility to educate people on network marketing because it's a phenomenal opportunity and it's our responsibility to change some of the perceptions that are out there. But again, do you believe it? Or are you kind of half, you know, a foot in the door and a foot out? Because that's going to show. That's going to show up in your business if you're not 100% all in. So keep that in mind. And so, you know, understanding, like, do you believe in yourself and do you believe in this business? And one thing I think, one thing I learned a long time ago that I thought was incredibly profound is that when it comes to this business, you will never attract anyone better than yourself. And I think that's incredible incredibly humbling. So if you want to build a business and you want motivated individuals and you want people who are going to work their business and you want people who are going to have results and they're going to be there running with you, guess who has to be the example of that, right? Guess who has to be showing up and being that example to their team? You have to do that. You have to be that first. And so thinking, you know, are you, are you walking the walk or are you just talking the talk? Are you, you know, having one-on-one -on -one calls with your coach and you're saying, yeah, I want to do this. I want to do this. But then you don't do anything, right? You don't do anything. You're letting other, you're letting negativity get the best of you. You're letting other people's opinions get the best of you. So just keeping that in mind, guys, you know, so confidence is important and confidence is something that can be built. Okay. Like I said, it's okay if you're just getting started, you're learning, but understand, yes, there are some people who are naturally confident or naturally outgoing, but also know that this business confidence can be built and it's, and it's built with that consistency. And then obviously if this is something that you struggle with, then personal development absolutely needs to be a humongous focus for you because that's where you're going to really start retraining your mindset so that you can really have the success that you want. All right. Last point that I want to talk about is in terms of in order to have success in this business is really connecting what we do as coaches with a mission and a vision that is personal to you. And what I mean by that, guys, is asking yourself, you know, what speaks to your heart? If you didn't have to worry about money, if you didn't have to worry about the bills, if all your loans were paid and all your credit cards were paid off and you had help and you had everything was perfect, what would you be doing with your time? I don't think all of you guys would be like sitting down twiddling your thumbs. You guys would be doing something. There's something that means the world to you. And so asking yourself, what is that? Like I have several coaches on my team who love mission work, for example. For me, I truly genuinely believe in the mission of our company and ending the trend of obesity. Like that is a personal mission of mine 
that I can stand behind 100%, right? And so what are the mission and the vision? You know, why? And then also asking yourself, why do you want to be successful? Why is that important to you? Because that's going to be incredibly important for the days when you don't want to wake, when you don't want to do this work, right? For the days when you're just like, I'm too tired. But when you have a deep why, when you know that you are working towards something that's bigger than yourself, you will show up, right? Because a lot of times, most people will show up for others before they'll show up for themselves. And so when you can connect what we do as beach body coaches and the responsibility we have as wellness coaches and the light workers that we are, which is what I tell my team, I'm like, look guys, we're health, you know, we're wellness ambassadors and we are light workers. We're out there being a light, bringing positivity, bringing love, bringing energy to people out there because people need it. They need our solutions and they need our positivity. And so asking yourself, what is something that you feel really passionate about? And then also imagine you had 100,000 people coming to your page every day. What, and that was actually something that I did from day one. That was the number one question that I asked myself when I only had 200 followers on, on, on Instagram. And I was like, what if I had 100,000? What would I say? And for me, it was going to be wellness and confidence. And if you go to my page, you'll see that that is my theme. My theme is wellness and confidence. I talk a lot about empowering women and being confident because that is something that I want a part of my messaging to be. So given your talents, passions, and values, how can you use these resources to serve, to help, to contribute, right? And so for me here, you know, this map right here shows the obesity trends. This was like back in 2013, and it was horrible. You know, all these little red states here, for example, show that over 34% of the population is overweight or obese. And the fact that childhood obesity, you know, one third of adolescents and children are overweight or obese. And so, and you know, that to me is incredibly alarming. And as an, I'm an emergency medicine physician, so I see all the consequences of what happens when people don't take care of themselves, right? I see all the heart attacks, all the diabetic complications, and I'm seeing it younger and younger and younger. I'm seeing all the stomach upset, all the GI issues coming in because people are not taking care of their body, all of the stress you know, because stress is a silent killer. I see it all. And I will tell you that even though this is a big part of my mission, and this is why guys, I want to really encourage you to figure out what is your mission? What would you like? What is your legacy that you're leaving behind by growing a brand on social media? If you're just thinking challenge packs, if you're just thinking the, the money and what it's going to do for specifically for like your family, I want to encourage you to just to think even bigger than that. Because that's what's going to really push you and really get you excited. And so for me, this is what I think about. So when I started in the ER, one of the things that really want, made me want to do work with women was that I had a lot of young women coming into my ER who were overweight and depressed and wanting to commit suicide. So mental health is a huge thing for me. And for me, mental health is very much tied to how you look and feel when you look in the mirror, right? And so... Me, when I started as a coach, I said, you know what, I'm going to hook them in because I know that people want to look and feel good. But really what I want to do is I want to empower them. I want to combat depression. I want to combat anxiety because I know that underneath the depression, underneath the anxiety, there's someone there who has amazing gifts to give to the world. And that is why I coach. That's why I still coach five years later. That's why I rode the wave of the up and down of coaching. It's why I show up with passion every single time I come to these calls, anytime I'm on social media, because at the end of the day, I know that what I'm really fighting for is against depression, against anxiety, against disease. And that is something that I can stand proudly behind and I can gather energy behind. And I know that that's a mission that I can continue on for many, many more years to come, right? And so really finding and connecting what is the mission that's going to help you, that's going to help you on those days when it's going to be hard, guys, because it's going to be hard. But what's going to keep you going? What's going to make you say, you know what, I have to show up no matter what, because it's worth it to me and because there's so much at stake, right? But if you don't think about that and you don't take this seriously, and, I, and for all of you, we need all of you. We need all of your stories. Every single one of you is unique. Every single one of you, your struggles, your obstacles, everything that you've gone through can serve someone else who's out there feeling like they're alone, right? Who's out there feeling like there's no one else out there who can understand. 
But if you keep your mouth shut and you keep your mouth quiet and you don't share this opportunity, you don't have the courage to share your story, you're doing not only yourself and the potential of this opportunity a disservice, but you're doing others a disservice as well, okay? And so I take this very seriously. I take this opportunity very seriously. I take what we do as coaches very seriously. And I wanna implore you to, for you to take this seriously because there's so much and there's so many people and don't think, oh, there's not enough people to help. There are hundreds of thousands of people out there to help, okay? All right, so every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars and to change the world. All right, that is it. So there are only two, mi oh, two mistakes one can make along the road to truth, not going all the way and not starting. So get out of your own way and start. So that is the end of my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> there goes Whitney. Whitney. Whitney's mind is blown over there. I see Whitney. Yeah, she's like, dude, Stephanie, <laughs> holy man! Like, we are dying over here right now. This is one of my coaches, and I'm like, oh yeah, like, all, the all the notes. I know. I was like feverishly taking notes too. Stephanie, do you have any time to take a few questions? Oh yeah, ask me as many questions as you want, guys. I'm with you know. I'm happy to stay here and answer. I'm an open book when it comes to anything. So. If you guys just want to unmute yourself, like, you know, don't be shy, please. And I have a question because I know my, if they're not going to ask this, they're going to want to know this. Um, what, do you have a certain schedule every day since you are, you know, working full time in other business, obviously, and then, you know, your job is busy. Um, <laughs> so do you do like power pockets, power hours? Do you just kind of fit it in when you can, or do you have like a set schedule? So I fit it in when I can. Okay. So I am the most, I got to, I got to stop saying that because everything after you say I am is the most powerful statement you can make. Um, so I'm working on being more organized in my life. Uh, but I'm an emergency medicine doctor guys. I am like, my mind is like a thousand things at once. And I have like squirrel syndrome, but I, fit it in in the cracks of my day. And so I will say this, when there were days that I was super, super busy, I always at the very least did the activity that was the most, that was be the most income producing, which is always reaching out to people every single day and making connections. Even if I couldn't get personal development in, even if with team per se, I always tried to be planting seeds and always be trying to be starting and, and following up with, with, um, with people. So, but no, I don't have a set schedule. I will say that every single day, you know, I do make sure to follow up with a certain amount of people. I make sure to be connecting with a certain amount of people. I make sure to be using my Instagram stories, posting, staying very engaging. And I always am asking, I'm always having, I always have call to actions in my post of some sort every day, if not every other day. So regardless of what's going on, that's what I do. Let's see. Oh yeah, you can get the PowerPoint, yeah. Oh, I'm in the South and right now and I'm just saying preach. <laughs> that's Christy. <laughs> um, what else do you guys have, anything? I, I don't have a ton of questions. I just thought it was like, there were a lot of really powerful statements in there and I was doing a, hammer and chisel workout not too long ago. And Autumn said something about it's motivation that gets you started and it's discipline that keeps you going. And I felt a little bit like that you said something similar to that, I feel like about discipline and like doing it every day. And I was like, yeah, that's so true, right? You're motivated to start, but you're not motivated forever. I think you said that too. Like there you're not, you're not motivated forever and life gets the best of us in life. But you know what guys, like, just like I'm sure you tell your customers when it comes to their weight loss, you know, their weight loss goals, like life is going to happen and you know, obstacles are going to happen and they're going to, this business, business is up and down all the time. And that's why it's so incredibly important. You know, it's the compound effect of our, of our vital behaviors. And it's, it's making sure that you're doing those connections every single day. You're doing those reach outs every single day. You're following up, right? Every single day. I am like the freaking follow up queen. Like I will follow up until you tell me, which is, I think no one's ever really told me to stop following up. Maybe like five people in five years. But like literally, even if people 
go MIA on me. I am consistent. And the, and you don't know how many times people are like, thank you so much for being so consistent. Thank you so much for never giving up on me. Thank you so much. Like, and I think I never felt like I would be bothering someone just because I know for me, I need to be constantly reminded of things. And so I never had that concern in my head, but just that discipline of doing our four vital behaviors and really making sure that you're staying consistent guys, because this business does not grow on its own. It doesn't grow on its own and it doesn't grow. If you, if you have big goals, it doesn't grow with just reaching out to three people a day. You need to bring up those numbers. You need to be increasing those numbers. For me, I have a goal of follow like 30 to 40 follow-ups a day. That's my goal, you know, and that's throughout the day. You know, I do, you know, as much as I can connecting with and following up with 30 to 40 people. And usually about five of those are current customers or coaches just to kind of put that and just really that connecting and really this, this business is all about relationship building. And so, you know, the more that you get into that habit of following up and building relationships and being patient and loving people where they are and meeting people where they are, but just staying consistent, you'll see success. I have had people tell me, thank you for not giving up on me. Yep. Absolutely. And I've had times where I follow up with people like four times, nothing, I'm not getting anything. And then finally they say something and they're just like, yeah, I'm ready. Or thank you so much. Or, and you just, you just can't, you just have to stay consistent with people, especially in this type of business. I have one question from someone that can't ask it. Um, she said, what do you do when your business waxes and wanes? So when you have like, a dry spell. I mean, my answer would be that's when you need to work harder, but I'm mm -hmm. sure you'll have something more eloquent to say than that. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think this is the power of consistency, right? Because usually a dry, to be honest, a dry spell a lot of times is comes after a time period when you're not planting seeds enough, right? And so like, you know, really just being honest with yourself and asking, you know, how have I looked at, my, you know, what was your behavior, your business activity like? in the prior weeks, because that's why it's so incredibly important that you're always staying consistent and you keep growing that list. Now, with that being said, have there been months where I've, you know, there have been a couple months where I've struggled to hit success club, let's say. However, those have been far and few between because I have high numbers of who I'm following up with and what I'm pushing for. And so I would say with the dry spells, it's just really going in. And that's when like, like Jillian is saying, that's when I would reach out to even more people you know, that's when I really dig deep and I really send voice memos and I send video memos and I go even the extra mile to really connect with people and really, because the way that I build my business and I don't know how you guys, but like, I, I don't try to convince people, right? I'm not in the job of convincing people to join us, to buy a product. I simply share the opportunity. I share our products. If it's for them, if they say no, thank you. I say, great. Would it be, you know, would it be okay if I follow up with you at a later date? And they usually 99% of the time they say, yes, I get a date. I say, they say, I say, okay, three months from now, they're like, yeah, that sounds about right. Or they'll tell me a better date. And I'm always getting a follow up, Even if they say no right now, I'm not trying to convince them, but I'm always working hard. But like on those, those months that were tough, I may reach out to some of those girls who maybe I sent the links out and I never heard from them or I say, you know, and I'm just like, Hey, let's get started. Let's get you going. Let's, I may be a little bit more aggressive on that end. But like I said, if you're planting seeds consistently and you're growing that list of follow-ups, you'll find that you won't have trouble hitting success club. You know, you'll find that you won't have, you know, and also, you know, um, making sure that you're being proof that the product works, making sure that you're showing results in your own physical fitness, you know, I, you know, I always know my business booms when I'm showing results, you know, when I am working hard and I am being consistent on that front, you know, that's when people will come as well. Awesome. Anything else you guys? Whitney? No, I'm like, I lit up over here. So, and I know my, my girls are too. I'm getting a lot of messages. Yeah. Anything else, you know, again, you know, this, I've been, I've been around for five years. I mean, I don't know how long Jillian and Whitney, you guys have been coaches, but four and a half. Yeah. yeah four. I four. just hit four. So we're yeah. about a year off. So. Yeah. 
So it's definitely, you know, it's, 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 this business is ups and downs, but it's, you know, it's super fulfilling and super awesome. And it's, but it's really connect, you know, those vital behaviors and staying consistent and, and really, you know, building that tribe and loving people where they are has been what I have found to be, to be fun and really encouraging that. So. Yeah, for sure. I just wanted to say, this is Christy. Hi, you can't see me. I don't know why. Hi. But, um, that's me smiling at you somewhere in black <laughs> and white. But um, something that just clicked in my head when you said it, and I don't know why it's never done that before. I used to own a fitness studio, a mm. freestanding fitness studio, and I didn't keep it. But I have never, and I don't know why, because I feel so stupid right now. I've never. Well, I know you're not stupid. Don't say those words. No, no, no. I know. I know. I'm not stupid. Okay. I'm just, I have this moment of, oh dear God, why didn't I think of this? But um, I never truly equated the two businesses on the same, I guess, railroad tracks. Because like you said, any business is a struggle. Yes. Any business has dry spells. You know, I'm used to the ebb and flow of the fitness world because I teach fitness classes. So I'm used to summer going down and I'm used to the beginning of the year being higher. You see that in Beachbody, but as far as just the business aspect, I never ever just interrelated those two and I feel like a doofus. So thank you for that. Yeah. No worries. I mean, at the end of the day, guys, like I said, like this is, it's a business like any other business, you know, we just, and you know, we, it's just a virtual business. And in a sense, you know, so it's really hard sometimes to grasp that, but yes, we have the same, we have to worry about the same things that a lot of brick and mortar businesses, you know, obviously that we worry about a little less because we have, you know, a lot of things created and, and for us and, you know, for us, however, the struggles and the obstacles and finding customers and customer retention and customer service, you know, that's incredibly important. You know, that's a big one too, guys. You know, it's like, how are you treating your customers? You know, what's your customer service like for your, for your, for your challengers? You know, one thing that I heard once that was really, I thought was a great question was like, how would you treat your customers differently if your business was solely based on referrals? And I said, you know what, that's a really good question you know, how would I treat my customers differently? What would I do? Would I send thank you cards? Would I, you know, send them little love notes and little love, you know, videos or whatever, but really asking yourself, you know, how are you treating your customers? And because that's going to, those are the people who are going to be your biggest advocates. Even if they're not coaches, they're going to be your biggest advocates. They're going to be your biggest supporters. They're going to be the ones that are going to keep coming back for more products. And so don't, you know, just making sure that you're treating your customers, you know, and you're treating them, you're treating them well. I love that. That's so true. We've got a, they are our biggest advocates. I personally send like a little, um, you guys have all seen them before. I send like a little, it's like a gift. It's like a card. This is thanks for joining us. And you get a $10 gift card with your next challenge pack. Oh, Whitney has them. I oh, nice. That. And then, um, I send a pack of Energize with that because the little packs fit in the envelope and I, you can put a stamp on it and you don't have to go to the post office. Time saver. Um, and then if they do to be mindset, I have like a little necklace I send because they don't need Energize, obviously. So um, that was a huge... People are always like, oh, do you find you get an ROI on that pack of Energize? I'm like, it cost me a dollar fifty. It's not yeah. about the ROI. It's like what you were saying, like building those relationships and letting yeah. people know they're appreciated. Yeah. Another thing I would say, since there's several of you guys, I would just, in, you know, encourage you. And if you're not doing this, I would encourage you to make sure that you are tapping into your tribe, make sure that you're tapping into your team and what Whitney and Jillian have for you guys, because that is incredibly incredibly important if not one of the most important when it comes to having success in this business is realizing that you're not doing this alone and not trying to be a loner in this and try and really connecting with whatever systems they have whether it's pods whether it's messenger you know but really connecting into the community because that's what's going to make this fun you know, it, it, you know, that's what's going to make this enjoyable to you. That's what's going to give you energy on the days when you don't have energy. If you're in a pod with other girls that are, you know, that have energy and they're seeing success, it's going to push you. But don't go trying to do this on your own because that's, that's also doing you a disservice, right? And so, and you can't say that you failed, that you didn't tap in, that nobody was there for you because I'm sure that they are there for you. 
but you have, you have to meet them halfway. You have, you know, none of us are mind readers. And so you have to come in and you have to connect. You have to tell us when you're struggling. You have to tell us when you're, you know, feeling down. You have to communicate. And tapping into the team is super important. And tapping into little pods and little tribes within your team is really important. So if you're looking to have success, say, you know what? I want to be in a pod because I want to be grouped with other girls that are excited, that are building. And don't be overwhelmed by it, you know, because it's important, right? It's about stepping outside of your comfort zone. It's about seeing other people that are doing things and saying, why not me? Why can't I have that success too? Let, let's go. Let's run together. But don't, just don't be that person that tries to do things on their own and then you lose steam and then next thing you know, you go MIA and we're like, what, where, where'd you go? What, what happened? But just really connecting with your team is really important. Awesome. If anyone wants a pod, post in the page and, and we can get you guys hooked They're up. so fun. I love them. They're so fun when you're with high energy girls and everyone is just sharing their success and their share. And obviously I understand that it's not for everyone, but for those of you who are a little bit more quiet, let's say it still helps and it still helps to, that's pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, that accountability. Because again, like I said, you want more in your life. You want your life to change. So guess what? You have to do things differently. You have to be willing to step outside of your comfort zone and do things differently. And this community is such a safe community for you to be pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and staying accountable. And it's not about comparing. It's just really about the collective energy within those pods and within the community. Whitney, did you have something you were going to say? No, no, I was just preaching. I was like, preach, amen. Yeah, yeah, yes. I saw you. Go, go. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just over here fangirling. That's it. I, I, I agree. I, like a thousand percent. It's, it saved my life, the community. So. And you. honestly, and, and that's, and I think that's what's key to understand, especially if you're someone that you haven't had a lot of financial success, let's say, and you're like, well, I don't have success and I'm not a leader. I'm not a coach. Understand that People, there's so many reasons why people would want to be a part of this community. And what I tell my team is, I joined this community again because I was seeking something I can be passionate about. And I joined this community because I longed for a community, you know, deep down. And there are girls on my team who joined this because they wanted a community. So lead with that. If that's what's changed your life, lead with that. You know, and that's just as important. The, the financial success is a byproduct of the people that you're helping, how much you grow. That's all a byproduct. And a lot of people, especially the people that are really going to push with you and grow this with you, a lot of times finances are not the main motivator. Yes, there is finances, but it's not the main motivators for the ones that are sometimes really going to take this business to the next level. And it's really because of that desire for community, that desire for something that they're passionate about. So keep that in mind for you as you're talking about coaching and you're talking about, because I say at the end of the day, that's what you're inviting people to. If you ever get a little feeling weird off about, oh, I don't know much about coaching, just say, you know, think of it in your head that you're inviting them into the community that you guys have with Whitney and with Jillian and how amazing it would be to get more people in that community to feel the collective energy. You know, that's what you're inviting people into. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, awesome. But yeah, guys, this opportunity, I was going to say, this opportunity has completely changed the direction of my life. And I just want to encourage you all to, to really dream big and to really, you know, realize that at the end of the day, you all matter and your stories matter. And, you know, we need more people on the ground, you know, being an example of health and wellness because a lot of people need our help and you just never know where this opportunity is going to take you. It could, it could, yes, it could end here in terms of beach body, but you never know. It could, you could build something and it can grow beyond this. And this could be, you know, a great platform for you to even expand further, you know, depending on what your goals are. So there's, you know, there's just so much potential here. And I honestly don't know what my life, where my life would be like if I had not said yes. You know, I, I honestly don't. It's completely changed my life. You know, it's, it's re it really, really has. That's amazing. All right. Well, 
if no one has anything else, I'm going to say thank you. I think everyone else has to say thank you too. Um, this was amazing. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and if you guys have any other questions, um, let me know. And Stephanie, I think said she'd send the presentation over. I'll post it so you have it. Um, and thank you so, so much again. I hope your headache goes away. <laughs> I know. I've been trying to drink water here. Yeah. I hope so too. <laughs> if not, I'll go to sleep. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you later. Thanks guys. Bye guys. Bye.